The U.S. Navy is giving new guidance for reporting unidentified flying objects, better known as UFOs, giving credence to the belief that something else is out there. While many experts say there are still very earthly explanations for it all, there has been a lot of investigation. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has the story from the Pentagon. Four years ago, on a training mission off the east coast of the United States before deploying to the Middle East, a pair of F-18 Navy Super Hornet pilots captured on their advanced radar an unidentified flying object. Uh, Are you box moving target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow. Look at, oh, oh, look at the fly. Objects with no visible engine or infrared exhaust plumes that reach 30,000 feet and hypersonic speeds. The New York Times reported that during the summer of 2014 through early spring 2015, sightings were nearly a daily occurrence. You have objects that are doing things, maneuvering in ways without any obvious sign of propulsion. Last month, the Navy announced it was establishing new classified guidelines for how its pilots report unidentified aerial phenomena. Doing so in the past was considered considered a career ender. Navy Commander David Fravor remembers the first time he saw one in 2004 flying off San Diego. Both airplanes see a disturbance in the water and a white 40 foot long tic tac shaped object just hovering above the water. Going forward, back, left, right, there's no rotor wash, there's no wings, nothing. Some say the sightings began after the Navy installed a new radar system, an upgrade from 1980s era radar. Others say they could be enemy spy drones or a classified program operated by the U.S. government, or weather balloons like the ones found in Roswell, New Mexico, which launched a whole generation of UFO sightings. Commercial pilots have been reporting unidentified flying objects for years. I don't know what it was. It wasn't an airplane. There was something just passed over. It's uh, like a, I don't know what it was. Funding for the Pentagon's Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program ended in 2012, but now there is new secret guidance about how military pilots should report these phenomena. Brett? Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thanks. More on this with the panel as well. Moving target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Look at the fly. As I get within about a half mile of it, it rapidly accelerates to the south in about two seconds and disappears. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Well, UFOs, sightings of them, I've heard about it for years, but this many? The New York Times with a piece, Wow, what is that? Navy pilots report unexplained flying objects. The strange objects, one of them like a spinning top moving against the wind, appeared almost daily from the summer of 2014 to March 2015, high in the skies over the East Coast. Navy pilots reported to their superiors that the objects had no visible engine or infrared, infrared exhaust plumes, but they could reach 30,000 feet and hypersonic speeds. Uh, back with the panel. Okay, Anna. <laughs> what do you think? Not my area of expertise. Not your area of expertise? Uh, but no, I mean, I think the bigger question to me is the fact that this story comes out and nobody's paying attention to it. That's what I mean, I'm saying. That is shocking to me that this has not garnered more calls for investigations. People saying no one's trying to debunk these guys and saying they're crazy. I mean, there's clearly some there there. There's there there. Tom, you had a piece uh, written today, why the UFO story is far more interesting than you think. Why is it? So, so uh, I'd be, I was working on this for a, for a while. I've always been very interested in this phenomenon. But, but the basic points are that we have seen uh, characteristics from these objects, whatever they are, that suggest intelligent control, adaptive responses in terms of interaction with US naval aviators, British aviators. Um, we have seen techn technology on these platforms that is far in advance either of the United States. It is not the Americans. I'm extremely confident of that. And if it is not the Americans, it is not the Chinese or Russians because they're in action, their uh, developed platforms in operation are far inferior, even on hypersonics where they're pretty good. The basic point is though, and this is the US government understanding, we don't know what it is. We don't think it's from Earth, but we don't, or, or any known government on Earth. So we need more an analysis. And you know, I was speaking to Nick Pope earlier today, who's the headed up the British government's UFO arm. And he said, look, a lot of this, these sightings are, you know, 
things that could be explained. Oh. But a lot of them aren't, and these videos aren't explainable, right. so we need more analysis. Here's reputable people uh, talking about this. Um, take a listen. You're talking about individuals who have very high security clearances. They are trained observers. We've actually paid them and put them through schools to be trained and very keen observers uh, to scrutinize what they're seeing. And they're reporting to us that they're seeing something that they can't explain. And it's also being backed up by the video evidence and the radar data. Really no distinct wings, no distinct tail, no distinct exhaust plume. It seemed like they were aware of our presence because they would actively move around us. All right, former CIA analysts, just give us the scoop. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Absolutely. despite what people think, Brett, they don't bring us in on day one at Langley and say, JFK assassination and UFOs. Here's Area everything you have to know. That, that's, actually not, that's actually not how it goes. Um, but to apply a CIA analyst's approach two? to this, <laughs> yeah, day two is when they get into the good stuff. To apply a, an analyst's approach to this, you'd say, OK, well, are these fabricators? Are people making up stories here? Sometimes you get the kind of crazy, kooky people you think they say they're abducted. That's not this, as has been pointed out. These are people with high clearances, government people who have no incentive to lie about it. And then if it's straightforward, if this is just a hashtag science explanation is all we need, well then what is it? I mean, to Tom's point, sometimes there are explanations, but so far with some of these that we've seen, there aren't explanations. So I would just like to know what the explanations would be. I just want to play I... one more. Uh, physics, can physics explain this? What would you estimate the speed? Oh, well above supersonic. It, it like a bullet out of a gun, it took off. So from what you know about aerodynamics, mechanics, physics, uh, should this be possible, what you saw? Not with the technology that we have today. Not, not at all. As December 20th, 2017, uh, Tucker's interview with this U.S. Navy commander. And that commander in another interview has said that he saw something below, below the water, which some people I've talked to have suggested that might be something, a controlling entity for those things. Regardless, we, the basic point is that we don't know. But what we know should be enough to continue the investigation with more publicity. A positive note, although ATIP, which was the organization that Luis Elizondo, who was showed there, ran closed up, the U.S. government still has programs investigating this. So it is still an act. And I've heard uh, Defense Secretary Shanahan is much more amenable to a sort of more open process here than and others. And the president could get in the game, too. I would love you to never, see that. Never yeah. Those <laughs> yeah, sure. As soon as possible. Senator Harry Reid yeah. used to be a proponent of more advocacy. John Podesta, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, was a big guy about alien... I, yeah, I mean, I remember being on the Hill and when Harry Reid was pushing this, because he was pushing the funding for it, that it was kind of a joke. Like, people were laughing at him and saying, oh, you know, Harry Reid, but he had the ability to kind of have the power of the purse. And clearly, uh, he, he's in Nevada now and probably laughing all the way to the fact that he was right on this. Ted Stevens as well. Ted Stevens, the late Ted Stevens from Alaska. All right, panel, we did our best. I mean, without a lot, of, a lot of details. We're <laughs>